What's going on everybody? My name is Zealot Prince and welcome back to yet another reaction video. Now, today we're reacting to someone completely different that I have not yet featured on this channel, but I have been watching a lot of off screen because I haven't didn't think about uploading react videos until um, until a few days ago. Until I uploaded the last one, which was about six days ago, maybe when I'm recording this. So um, we're reacting to SCP-610. The flesh that hates. Now, I'm pretty sure I ha might have an idea of what this creature is, but I don't know the extent of what it is. So, um, I don't know really too much else to say, but we're going to go ahead and react to this. In three, two, one. Oh, before I say that, there is some viewer this, this um, what do you call it? There is going to be things that people do not want to see. If you don't want to see that, please click off or if you want to stay and continue stay on your own will so we're going to go ahead and click play on this bad boy in three two one go viewer discretion is advised as d2 spasms on the ground his entire body being overtaken by the sickly tan flesh almost entirely after 45 seconds d2 is terminated by a gunshot from d1 Jesus. but that did not stop the spread of scp610 Hello everybody, okay, so I'm I know The Rubber. This is. Today, we bring you SCP Foundation Keter Class Object, oh, SCP-610, Part 1. First, let me introduce my buddy, from SCP Animated, Tells from the Foundation. Hi everybody, I'm Dr. Oh, Ken. Oh shit, they're in this? SCP-610, also known as the oh, Flesh collaboration. Hates, appears to be a contagious skin disease, with symptoms including rash, itching, and increased skin sensitivity. Within three hours, the disease will cause blemishes, resembling blemishes. heavy scar tissue to form in the chest and arm areas. Oh. Within an additional sure hour, is. it will spread to the legs and back, and consuming the victim completely within five hours. Yikes. Exposure to higher temperatures will vastly decrease the time for the contagion to spread, and complete infections have been recorded occurring in as little as five minutes. Thanks, buddy. After the completion of the infection, the victim's life functions will cease for approximately three minutes. So it pretty After much kills that, them. They will restart at two to three times the activity rate of a normal human. Following this, oh the scar tissue on the victims will start to move and grow at a rapid rate. Normal human features start to disappear at this point. And the path of mutation so like appears to be sizes? largely random. Victims observed in this stage have yeah. been recorded Ew. as growing three or more limbs like arms or legs. The head may become misshapen and elongate or widen out and parts of the subject may split open from which additional branches of flesh will grow. But so it's like a corroding virus that just continues to grow and grow no matter how much mass it consumes. So basically the flood from Halo? But the weird thing is, not all subjects appear to progress to the same stage. There are two types of infected victims. One of them Dude, will cease moving and place itself creepier. in a location and roots itself like a plant. The fleshy growth on the victim will then begin to spread itself across all surrounding objects and- Okay, so this is an SCP I've heard of before, but I didn't know the full extent of it. Okay. ...consume them. However, this type of infection does not infect living creatures. The other kind of infected victims will immediately seek out aid as natural human impulse resulting in unintended infection. And those who have lost their human form through the scar tissue phase will actively and aggressively attempt to infect anyone approaching them within an undefined area. If the infected has lost the ability of sight, a range of approximately 30 meters is considered safe. Initial reports of 610 came directly from the Russian government, after reports consisted primarily of disappearances of farmers in the region followed by the local police, regional police, and a government dispatched agent all failed to report within a 72-hour period. So it got to them first before they can even report back. It's kind of terrifying. A small military contingent was dispatched to the area and quickly withdrew, at which point the Foundation was contacted to investigate. Here's something I wanted to ask about the found SCP Foundation. Do many people know what the SCP Foundation is? in the SCP Foundation universe, or do they not, aren't supposed to know, do them always erasing their memories? That's the biggest question I have for the SCP Foundation. Not the monsters, is that do other people in the, in the universe where it's from, do they know it exists? The area SCP-610 affects are close to Lake Baikal in southern Siberia. 
Areas of known infection are marked on this map. Due to the vast area of infection 610 covers, containment is impossible. Oh. Isolation of the so area has proved far more effective, right, right, and it's permission a has been granted by the Russian government to establish a perimeter to keep people out of these areas. Any living thing coming in physical contact with an organism infected with 610 is considered expendable and is to be immediately terminated and incinerated. Anyone coming within 3 meters of 610 infected life is to immediately withdraw from the area, be isolated from the rest of their team, and subjected to medical examination and observations. Observation of life infected by SCP-610 by staff is impossible. Hence, observations could only be done by using artificial methods, such as remote robots. The data returned from... Right, because it can't infect machinery, it can only infect living tissue. These observations, coupled with the openly aggressive nature of the infected to attempt to spread, SCP-610 has resulted in the Keter classification. However, so long as nothing is allowed to enter or leave the infected areas, it is considered a neutralized threat. But after the cavernous areas beneath the infected settlements were discovered during the exploration, the Foundation sent in research personnel for further investigation. There is a total of five field exploration logs for both the remote robot and also the human expeditions. The first exploration was done by a small camera-mounted unit known as he Herbie. Looks, Her Herbie looks like Wally. He does. I have a Wally plushie. Plushie over there, off screen. So I would know. It's also one of my favorite Disney movies. Or was it Pixar? I get the two confused. Herbie was dispatched at a safe distance and directed toward a part of an infected small village, hereafter referred to as Site A. Many of the homes appear to have suffered fire damage, but a fair amount of buildings are still intact. Through the camera feed, it seems that an estimated population of 79 were infected. Immobile infected are included in this number. Jesus. However, it is difficult to ascertain an exact percentage of mobile versus immobile. After observing the exterior of the village for two hours, Herbie was directed to follow an infected known as Alpha as it entered a home. The home contains multiple visible infected organisms, and Herbie's camera was raised slowly as to not draw attention. Alpha walks around its home multiple times before stopping at another infected, hereafter known as Beta, sitting on a bed. Beta is unable to leave the bed for unknown reasons, but is not completely immobile as it flails its arms in response to the beatings delivered by Alpha. Moments later, a piercing sound explodes from the area around Beta who then proceeds to project a cloud of unknown matter into the air from its chest cavity. For a second there, I thought it was bones coming out of his back. It was like dispensing the bones, so that way only the flesh would remain. I'm pausing too much, but I don't know. Alpha lingers in the cloud as it floats in the air around them, slowly descending to the ground. The unknown life form on the table aside Beta begins to twitch in an apparent seizure. An alpha then laps the room twice more, stopping at each infected organism, but now ignoring beta. Then alpha seats itself at the table, reaches out for three plates and set it on the table. After the plates are positioned, the facial tendrils extending from alpha wiggle up and start to coil on each plate before tearing apart and separating. Alpha then leaves the house. Several minutes later, a group of six to seven infected enter the home. These infected all surround the table, and each takes turn consuming the flesh substance left behind by Alpha, Ew. pressing it into whatever orifices on their bodies, some under their arms, some into mouths, some into the chest, some behind their backs. Herbie remains here for several more minutes before retracting its camera. It almost acts like a hive mind. Every single organism of, of 610 is a single uh, telekinesis hive mind. So they're always in contact with each other. And it appears that the alpha one is the one that's in control, who has the most um, intelligence. And leaving. Herbie is then directed to explore a store. Here he finds more infected individuals. A Russian soldier who doesn't seem to be moving, but his eyes are in constant movement, often focusing on Herbie. In a storage area, a large pile of bodies are stacked together. Some pieces of clothing are visible and appear to contain both military garb and everyday clothing. Atop the bodies, an infected sits, 
appearing to have its lower parts fused to the pile and with its upper half in a wild state of flailing and seizure. Approximately every 10 seconds, a burst of spores flies out the top of this infected, which linger in the air. Herbie then leaves the store and passes by the village well, surrounding which are a series of immobile infected all facing the well. The arms of each of these infected individuals are stretched out, one in contact with the next, forming a perfect chain. Suddenly, an infected young girl grabs and stares at Herbie. Oh, I don't like its that. Its face balloons in size and explodes outward into a series of fleshy flaps that grip Herbie and draw it inside of her. Herbie's video feed terminates here. Five Not Wally. Oh, he comes back. Five hours later, Herbie's video feed resumed. Herbie's camera pointed at the village well with a slimy film which often oozes across the lens. Herbie does not respond to any remote command, but its video jerks back and forth from target to target, zooming in and out of its own accord. Video feed is cut manually, and all connections to Herbie's unit are ordered erased. The oh, second so they, did, so they basically destroyed the unit afterwards because they couldn't, because they can't go in there and retrieve it. Operation on SCP-610 happened during construction of the perimeter surrounding SCP-610's containment area. Several Class D personnel were infected. Most of these infected personnel were immediately destroyed with flamethrowers. They were incinerated. A small collection of infected were contained in cold storage units to prolong the progression of infection. In hopes of finding out more information on the origin point of 610, the Foundation sent three infected personnel, D1, D2, and D3, and D3. into Site C with a single video system. Site C is in the same infected village with the Site A mentioned earlier, but different spot. The three infected personnel were given 9mm pistols, gasoline, emergency flares, and... What are guns going to do to the ones that are already completely infected and have already mor metamorphosized? I'm going to assume and say nothing, because it's just gonna, probably going to go right through, because I don't think these things have any internal organs that can function, or at least function at all because it's just all flesh now and some food they were also instructed to observe and avoid interaction with the infected villagers but if they're attacked by the infected villagers they're allowed to do as much damage to the site as possible while maintaining video feed as d1 d2 and d3 enter the site there is a noticeable rise in the temperature which requires a further shedding of garments one of them immediately oh noticed a large number of immobile pylons arrayed around the site separated by an apparent distance of five to six meters. Each pylon appears to be two to four infected persons fused together in one spot. Heat vents out of these pylons, and current belief is that this is an advanced stage of SCP-610, terraforming its environment to facilitate spread of itself. D2 begins to seizure after only a few minutes in Site C. The progression to the oh, scar shit, tissue phase infected. of 610 infection is observed in full course, as D2 spasms on the ground, his entire body being overtaken by the sickly tan flesh, almost entirely after 45 seconds. So outside the site, it takes longer for the infected to transform, but as soon as they get in, into the site where the mo majority of the infection is, they become infected even faster. It like escalates the process faster. At least that's what I'm getting from this. D2 is terminated by a gunshot from D1. But and that did not infected. stop the spread of 610. The spread continues even after death of the body, until all movement ceases. As perimeter control is relaying new instructions to D1 and D3, video feed shows a flesh-like growth splitting open beneath D2's body, and a series of ropey tendrils coming from within the gap to pull his corpse inside. This opening closes quickly. Total time elapsed three seconds. D1 and D3 quickly proceed to the village center and encounter a sphere suspended by angled supports, comprised of both infected humans and a few specimens of non-human life forms such as deer and bears. The entire that is the most creepiest thing I've ever seen, and it kind of reminds me of the Grave Mind from Halo, from the Halo franchise. If any of you have been to the seen the Halo fr franchise, you'll immediately think of the Proto Grave Mind from Halo One, the first ever Halo game. Sphere of flesh pulses at roughly a five second interval, and with each pulse emits a ring of spore like material from its equator. This material floats to the ground and appears to be absorbed into the converted environment. D3 begins to douse the sphere with the provided gasoline, 
and a lit emergency flare is applied to it, which immediately goes up in flames. The remote feed plays back an explosive and creature roaring noise from an unknown location that seems to come from a location far outside of Site C, but was reported as being heard even at perimeter control by both Sites C and A. Within 15 seconds following the sound's dissipation, Site A reported that a series of explosions had occurred within the village. Five seconds after this report, the spherical mass in the middle of Site C explodes, and both D1 and D3 are thrown by the blast. D3 dies instantly, but D1 manages to stand back up. D1's video equipment falls to the ground and was recording in a skyward direction. The last moments of footage from D1's video unit display a humanoid figure unknown creature, steps upon the recording video equipment and destroys it. Perimeter control remained... So it is a hive mind because it hurt her one massive uh, intelligent cell, brain control, and then affected the others, but it didn't kill the others. On high alert for a full 24 hours at all locations, without any incident following this event. The destruction caused by the second exploration resulted in a series of unexpected events in Site A. That being said, there's still more to add to the story that indicates the danger and horror of SCP-610, but we will explore the rest of it in Part 2, so stay tuned. I Before will. we end this video, we are proud to present these incredibly sweet pieces of fan art. A big thank you to all of you. You can now send us your fan art, and we will be more than happy to show off your best art piece in our next video. Check out our description below on how to submit. I hope you enjoyed today's video. Which SCP do you want to see in the next video, and why it is interesting? Let us know in the comment below. We will draw your story and share it with the world. Don't forget to click like, subscribe to the channel, and hit the bell. Please share it to your friends if you like this video. Thank you so much for watching, and we will see you in the next video. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Bye-bye, rubber. Okay, so I did already know a little bit about SCP-610. I didn't know the name. It's been a long time since I actually looked into it. I only heard about it once, and that was from, um, what was their channel name? Tall Tales? Or it was something else. I'll put it on screen, the channel I'm talking about. Um, but I'm glad I know more about this SCP because it's really interesting and reminds me a lot of the Flood from Halo. I know I said it multiple times in the video, but that's all I couldn't stop thinking about throughout watching this entire video with 610. <laughs> Channels like this deserve a lot more recognition than you think because they put a lot of time and they go into depth about these SCPs. Not an extreme amount of depth, but... They do enough depth so you understand the basic uh, directions that these creatures are going in and what they uh, function or functions are. So, <laughs> and I'm a big fan of the SCP Foundation. So, you guys can see where this is going with me. I'm going to continue to watch Rubber stuff. I'm not going to react to any of his old stuff that he already posted because I've already seen all of them except for this one that just literally came out yesterday. But um. Yeah, expect more videos from the rubber somewhere down the line whenever he uploads more. And with that being said, guys, hopefully you did enjoy today's reaction video. Like and subscribe, and I'll see you all in the next video. Bye!